Transcribed. Mother, is Maxwell House the best coffee in the whole world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by Maxwell House. The coffee that's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. Conversation is a peculiar art and probably the only one divided into genders. There is, for example, male conversation such as an earnest, intelligent discussion of politics or science. Then there is female conversation, such as Millicent Murgatroyd's latest hairdo and the restraining influence of the two-way stretch. When it comes to universal conversation, however, there is one item that stands head and shoulders above the rest. That's why, perhaps, we find the Andersons, male and female, large and small, gathered in the kitchen and diving headlong into a discussion on the world's most popular subject, food. Like this. I tell you, Margaret, that's the trouble with the world today. We're digging a grave with our teeth. Yes, dear. It's an established fact that food has killed more people than anything else in the world. Yeah, but what a way to die. (laughs) But. Well, holy cow, Dad, you have to eat. Not the way you do. He eats like a pig. Okay, Kathy, just you wait, that's all. That's what Betty said. Never mind, Nothead. Don't drag me into it. But you said... Kathy, I was referring to the things we eat rather than the manner in which we eat them. Don't pigs eat hamburgers? That isn't the point. Don't they, Mommy? I imagine they would if they had the chance. Then Bud eats like a pig. (laughs) Dad, do I have to stand here? Of course not. Sit down. (laughs) Holy cow. Now, if I may continue with what I was saying... Jim, don't you think we'd better start from the beginning? What do you mean, from the beginning? Well, you just don't come up with a statement like that out of a clear sky. A statement like what? We eat too much. That isn't what I said. What I said is, do you realize that over 90% of the people today eat food that is lacking in lecithin, cholesterol, and other substances necessary to the maintenance of proper health? Jim... Well, do you? We don't even know what they are. (laughs) There, you see. I wouldn't eat them if I did know what they were. (laughs) Of course you would. You eat them every day. I thought you said we didn't. I said you don't eat enough of them. Enough of what? Foods containing lecithin and cholesterol. Margaret, haven't you been listening? Of course, dear, with bated breath. The foods we generally eat, overcooked vegetables, potatoes, steaks, chops. Uh, when will dinner be ready? In about ten minutes. Good. Certainly smells delicious. Ow! Mm-hmm. Serves you right. I've told you a million times not to snoop around the stove when I'm trying to work. Well, I just wanted to see... Uh, what were we talking about? You were talking about food. And why people over 90 shouldn't have any. <laughs> I never said anything like that. I said 90% of the people shouldn't have any. I mean... 90% of the people today don't eat properly. Because they use their fingers for a pusher. Because they eat food that doesn't have the proper nutritional value. Jim, are you trying to say that I'm not giving you and the children the proper sort of food? Oh, no, honey. I, uh, well... We have three normal, healthy children. Of course we do. And we don't need any of that, uh, let's get thin and clutter all. Lezithin and cholesterol. <laughs> well, whatever it is. And if you aren't satisfied with the way I cook... Margaret, you're misunderstanding the whole thing. I never said the children weren't healthy. If Kathy was any healthier, we'd all have to move out. (laughs) Bud. Well, good gravy, the way she tears around. I am merely trying to point out that the American people are eating themselves into oblivion. Where's that? (laughs) Kathy, go wash your face. I just did. Wash it again. But, Daddy... Go ahead, dear. Gee whiz, every time there's an argument, I have to go wash my face. There isn't any argument. I'm merely telling your mother about a book. Well, finally. What kind of a book, Dad? All you have to do is mention something around here, and everybody thinks it's an argument. No, no one said anything about an argument, Jim. Kathy did. What kind of a book, Dad? She very distinctly said we were having an argument. 
Don't pay any attention to her, Father. She just doesn't like to wash her face. Well, that's no reason for her to accuse me of starting an argument. What kind of an argument, Dad? <laughs> what? Well, I mean, what kind of a book, Dad? What kind of what book? I don't know. Jim. <laughs> Won't you please start from the beginning? Honey... What is all this nonsense about food and books? It isn't nonsense, Margaret. It's a very good book called Learn to Live and Like It. Matter of fact, it's brilliant. Betty, please turn the heat down on the potatoes. You bet. Dr. Milford Clark is one of America's leading authorities on dietary deficiencies, and he proves conclusively that civilized people don't know how to eat. You mean he'd rather we ate our food under the table than on it? I mean... Honey, have you ever used fenugreek seeds? Fenugreek. What? Fenugreek seeds. You use them for cooking. Not in this house. Well, there's no need to get upset. There's nothing horrible about them. What are they? Fenugreek seeds? That's an herb containing choline, a lipotropic substance used clinically to dissolve deposits of cholesterol. So what else is no? <laughs> But if you'd listen a little more and talk a little less, you might learn something. About seeds? About a lot of things. Did I miss anything? Is the argument all over? There wasn't any argument. How do you like my face now? It's fine. It's probably one of the finest faces I've ever seen. Why, Daddy! Ask him about the upper creek seeds. <laughs> the what? Bud. You told everybody else. About what? Kathy... Why don't you go wash your hands? But I just got through. Go ahead, Kathy. Gee whiz. Someday I'll wash once too often and I'll disappear. <laughs> Jim, what do Dr. Clark and the Hoosie Watt seeds have to do with us? They are not Hoosie Watt seeds. <laughs> They're fenugreek seeds. Oh, I beg your pardon. How could I possibly be so stupid? And they've got plenty to do with us. Fenugreek seeds are the basis of the diet Dr. Clark is going to explain at the Chamber of Commerce dinner. Oh, that's who he is. Who is he? Well, let's not rush things, Angel. We'll get our information one step at a time. If we live that long. Now, see here, bud. If who lives how long? Kathy, I thought I told you to wash your hands. But I just remembered. They got washed while I was doing my face. Margaret. Leave the child alone, Jim. She isn't getting anything any more confused than it always is. I didn't even say anything. Who has? Dear, would you like to tell us about Dr. Clark, or shall we finish our game of 20 questions? I don't know why you're making all this fuss about a perfectly simple little thing. I swear I don't. Dr. Clark is the guest of honor at the dinner Saturday night, and I have to introduce him. That's all there is to it. So you read his book? That's right. Sounds more like you swallowed it. <laughs> All right, bud, that does it. From now on... The bell. Excuse me, Dad, I have to... Come take... back here. But it's the front door, and I have to... Ask... I said come back here. But you always tell me I'm supposed to drop everything when the front door... Kathy, goes... see who's at the front door like a good girl. But it's Bud. Bud and I have certain little things to discuss. Go ahead, kitten. Yes, Daddy. Scab. <laughs> now, Mr. James Anderson, Jr., Jim, I don't think I can stand this another minute. Will you please finish about Dr. Clark? I'd rather finish about my wisecracking son. I'll be glad to wait, Dad. Well, <laughs> Dr. Clark is a friend of Mr. Edwards. The president of the Chamber of Commerce. Right. And he has a diet which he claims will add 20 years to the normal span of a man's life. Mr. Edwards? Dr. Clark. Oh. So they figured that the dinner would be a good place to show what a wonderful diet it is. He asked me if I'd be willing to say a few words of introduction. Dr. Clark did. No, honey, Mr. Edwards did. <laughs> Go ahead, dear. That's all there is to it, except that it's a wonderful diet. With fenugreek seeds. Fenugreek seeds. I didn't say anything. Good. <laughs> you see, the doctor explains in his book that life is maintained in direct ratio to the lack of obesity in man. Now, a diet of raw food such as kale, cabbage, raw egg yolk, olive oil, and liver fat will tend to discourage any inclination toward overeating. And how? <laughs> and he claims... Daddy, it was the cleaner. Mr. Manassian? No, Dr. <laughs> oh. He brought that 
like your tuxedo. Do you want me to take it upstairs? Jim, you didn't have that horrible old thing cleaned again. There's nothing horrible about it. But we agreed the last time that you needed a new one, and if you keep going to these dinners... What's the matter? Hold it up, Kathy. Yes, Mommy. Well... Something wrong? No, it looks fine. That's what I told you. All it needed was a good cleaning. Shall I take it upstairs? I'll take it, kitten. I want to see if he moved the button far enough. Jim, there isn't any connection between moving a button and Dr. Clark's reducing diet, is there? It isn't a reducing diet, Margaret. It's a health diet. And I certainly think that after 15 years, I have a right to have a button move. Yes, dear. It isn't that I'm putting on any weight. It's just that after it's been cleaned so much, it... uh... Hmm. What's the matter, Dad? Can't you get it buttoned? I can button it fine. He just can't breathe, that's all. (laughs) Jim, I told you... There's nothing wrong with the tuxedo. He uh, must have moved the button the wrong way. Sure. Bud. Oh, I was agreeing with you, Dad. He moved the button the wrong way. That's what I meant. It looks real pretty, doesn't it, Daddy? Yes, it... Well, let's forget about the tuxedo for the time being. Getting back to Dr. Clark... Oh, dear. I think we'll all be much better... Did you say something, honey? Jim, you're not going on a reducing diet, are you? Margaret, I told you, it is not a reducing diet. Naturally, it keeps you in condition, but it's not a reducing diet. You won't be able to stay on it two minutes. Kale and cabbage. And raw eggs. I think we'll all do very well on Dr. Clark's diet. Jim, I... Oh! Oh! Holy cow, Dad. Father, you don't expect us to eat that stuff. What stuff? Liver fat. (laughs) The very least we can do is try it. Angel, we have three growing children. And they'll grow healthier and live longer on Dr. Clark's diet. They'll learn to live and like it. Chomping creepers. Raw egg yolk. And since there's no time like the present, we'll start with dinner. You mean this dinner? Now? Right now. I don't want to eat raw eggs for dinner. You're not going to. Jim, I have the entire meal prepared. I know, honey, but you've got to be firm with these things. Well, I spend a whole day fixing your favorite meatloaf. And when you... (laughs) Meatloaf? And scalloped potatoes. Margaret, when you decide on a thing like this, you've got to go through with it. And we're all going on the Dr. Clark diet. First thing in the morning. (laughs) How would you like to have dinner at the Anderson home tomorrow night, hmm? Well, fenugreek seeds or no fenugreek seeds, you can bet there's one mealtime pleasure the Andersons will never give up. And that's the enjoyment of coffee. Really good coffee. In other words, our Maxwell House. And you know, there's a whole world of difference between rich, truly satisfying Maxwell House coffee and just coffee. The difference is that wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor. A flavor no other coffee has ever matched a flavor that belongs to Maxwell House alone. Now, the reason no other coffee tastes like Maxwell House is that no other coffee is made like Maxwell House. You see, coffee beans grow all over the world, and there are countless grades and varieties of them. But on the mile-high plateaus of Latin America, there grow a few rare choice kinds of coffee beans, rich in flavor, bursting with goodness. And it is these extra flavorful varieties that first and foremost are chosen for our Maxwell House blend. For example, fancy Manizales coffees are selected for fragrant mellowness. Superb Medellins for extra richness. Choice Bucaramanga's coffees for fine, full body. Yes, it is these fine, vintage coffees blended in just the right proportions that create that world-famous good-to-the-last-drop flavor. A flavor so good that more people buy and enjoy our Maxwell House coffee than any other brand at any price. So how about it? For the most in downright coffee-drinking enjoyment, try our Maxwell House, won't you? It's the one, the only coffee that's always good to the last drop. A day has passed since last we saw the Andersons. 
One day, 22 minutes, 14 seconds, and three meals. It's dinner time again, and once more the family is gathered about the festive board. The table is piled high with all sorts of tasty things. Raw carrots, celery, kale, cabbage. Well, it isn't exactly festive, I guess, but they're certainly bored. Like this. Mother. What is it, Betty? Is my nose twitching? No, I don't think so, dear. Why? I feel just like a rabbit. You look like a rabbit. Do I? That's your brother's idea of a joke, kitten. Have another carrot. Jimmy Woody says if you eat rabbit food, you get big ears. That's very interesting. (laughs) (laughs) All right, bud. What? Let's have it. Oh, it isn't anything, Dad. I was just thinking of a rabbit's tail. We'd sure look funny if... Never mind, bud. (laughs) Well, wouldn't we? I don't want to look like a rabbit. You know, it's an amazing thing. A genius like Dr. Clark devotes his entire life to the development of a diet. But you'd rather take the word of a nine-year-old pipsqueak like Jimmy Woody. He's ten. I beg your pardon, a ten-year-old pipsqueak. Father, how long do we have to eat these horrible things? That's not the proper attitude, Betty. In two or three weeks, we'll get used to the Clark diet and we'll get along fine. In two or three weeks, we'll be dead. (laughs) But if you aren't happy with your dinner... Yes? Have some raw egg yolk. (laughs) Thank you. Betty? It's bad enough eating raw cabbage. Jim, you might not believe this, but I went to three markets this afternoon and they were all fresh out of fenugreek seeds. You know, somehow I get the impression that you aren't particularly fond of this diet. Why, Jim, whatever made you think a thing like that? You don't seem to realize that this is a very serious matter. Who doesn't? Do you know what Dr. Clark says? He says that the American diet contains such a large percentage of residue and alkaline minerals that the ratio of carbohydrates is shockingly disproportionate. What does that mean? I don't know. (laughs) But it certainly makes you stop and think, doesn't it? Doesn't make me stop and think. But this is a diet, not a miracle. Jim. Take fats, for example. What do we know about fats? May I please be excused? No. Did you know... Jim, if she's finished with her dinner, why can't she be excused? Because this is very interesting. Did you know that the digestibility of fats depends upon, one, the melting point, two, whether or not it saponifies properly, and three, to what degree it resists the digestive ferments? Well, did you? I didn't. You see? Now may I be excused? (laughs) Kathy, as you grow older, you'll find all this very important. If I don't get some food, I'm not going to get any older. (laughs) What was that? Oh, I, uh, (laughs) I said, uh, um, uh, now that summer's almost over, it's uh, sure getting colder. (laughs) Yes, sir, (laughs) it sure is. (laughs) Yes. May I have my coffee, please? Here you are, dear. Thank you. The trouble with the people in this family is that they don't want to learn anything. All they care about are strapless evening gowns and gasoline scooters. And hamburgers. Thank you, kitten, and hamburgers. Now may I be excused? Kathy, you're a sensible little girl. Wouldn't you like to hear what Dr. Clark has to say about Corinth? My, it's certainly getting late, isn't it? Margaret. I'd better get started on the dishes or we'll be here all night. But I have Don't hurry, dear. You just sit there and enjoy your coffee while we do the dishes. Are you coming, Betty? It is my turn to... Oh, excuse me, Father. I have to help Mother with the dishes. Want me to dry, please? All right. (laughs) Come along. Can't I do something? Sure, you can keep Father company. Gee whiz. We won't be very long, dear. Oh, don't worry about us. I'm going to tell Kathy all about Corinth. You do that. You see, kitten, Corinth's or dried seedless grapes, in contrast to dry seedy grapes, are poor in water. 79.1%. Bud, close the door. Yes, ma'am. Naturally, that makes it one. Oh, what a relief. What's the matter with Dad? Doesn't he feel well? He feels fine, but it's just that, well, he becomes so interested in the people he has to introduce these dinners that he gets carried away. He should be. 
God, that's not very respectful. Oh, I'm sorry, but good grief, Mom. Why should we have to eat all that junk just because he's interested? It's all good, healthy food, dear. It won't do you the least bit of harm. It won't do me any good, either. Phonograph seeds. Mother, what if he had to introduce a fan dancer? Would we have to run around... Betty. <laughs> really, dear. Well, then, why do we have to eat rabbit food? We're not going to. We're going to put an end to this foolishness once and for all. How do we do that? We're going to get rid of your father's tuxedo. What's the tuxedo got to do with it? Father said it wasn't a reducing diet. We're all on this horrible diet because your father's tuxedo won't button. I still don't get it. Bud, your father's had that same tuxedo for 15 years, and he just won't admit that he's put on a little weight. But he said... Betty, do you like eating that rabbit food? Of course not. Bud? What's up, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> No. All right, then. You've both got to help me get rid of that miserable tuxedo. Mother, you've always said, well... Gosh, if Dad really likes it... Margaret, don't forget to order some liver fat for tomorrow. <laughs> All right, dear. What do you want us to do? We won't have to shoot anybody, will we? <laughs> Very simple. We're just going to make a few uh, alterations. But we don't know how to alter a tuxedo. I know. And when we get through, no one will be able to fix it. How's that going to get us off the diet? We're going to rip that old tuxedo to shreds. And your father will have to buy a new one. One that fits him. Oh. Then we'll see how long he worries about whether or not his food saponifies. Uh, Mom, what if he finds out? He won't find out. But if he does... Oh, well, I can always move in with Janie Liggett. Don't forget, we're going to fix it. Mom, maybe we... But... Well, dear, have you and Kathy fixed up our menu for tomorrow? I was just telling her about the horrible things eating can do to your hemoglobin. Oh? I don't think we ever ought to eat again. <laughs> we don't have to go that far, kitten. Well, thank goodness for that. Uh, Bud. Yes, ma'am? Why don't you run upstairs and get your father's tuxedo like a good boy? Okay. What does he want to do that for? I'll bring it right down, Dad. Honey, I don't need... We're going to fix it for you, Father. But it doesn't need fixing. Of course it does. All it needs is to have the button move. Jim, having the button moved isn't going to make the shoulders any looser. But... Are you going to loosen Daddy's shoulders? <laughs> We're going to loosen everything. Margaret, there isn't any reason... But... Bud, why can't you learn to walk down the stairs? I thought you were in a hurry. For what? I'm not going anywhere. All right, dear. Slip it on. I don't want to slip it on. Jim. Honey, you don't know anything about ordering tuxedos. Well, of course I do. Put it on, dear. Oh, Mommy yeah. fixes my dresses all the time. Well, dresses are different. This is a job for a tailor. I mean, all it needs is to have the button move. There. You see, Betty, it's much too tight across the shoulders, isn't it? It's tight other places, too. Margaret, if I just stay on this diet... Angel, the dinner is tomorrow night, and no diet is going to make that coat fit in 24 hours. But all it needs... We'll have to let out the seam in the back. Go ahead, bud. What? Open the seam in the back. Honey... Turn around, Jim. Honey, if you'll only... All right, bud. Like this? Bud! <laughs> Margaret! Doesn't that feel better? It certainly looks better. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Quite sure, dear. Now, the seam's on the side. Well, take it easy, will you, bud? Okay, Dad. I'll get the one over here. Betty, you're tearing it. I am? Why can't I tear something? <laughs> Later, Angel. Now... Honey, don't you think you've done enough to this poor coat? Uh, not quite. But I think we ought to remove the sleeves. What for? We'll explain the whole thing some other time, dear. Go ahead, children. Oh, Bud, will you... Margaret, they've ruined the whole... Stop it! Betty, you didn't have to pull the pocket off. It looked a little tight. Honey, look at this thing. You'll never be able to fix it. It does look a little ragged, doesn't it? I'll see who's at the door. Look what she did with this pocket. She ripped the whole front of the coat. Want me to rip the pocket from the bottom, Daddy? You keep away from me. I didn't do anything. I don't know what got into you, any of you. Now I'll have to buy a new tuxedo. Oh, dear, isn't that too bad? We're awfully sorry, Father. 
You sound awfully sorry. Dad, it's Mr. Manassian. The cleaner? I wonder what he wants. Come on in, Mr. Manassian. Oh, thank you, Mr. Anderson. I was just... Something happened? I don't know. I think my whole family's gone a little nuts. But I didn't do anything, Daddy. You didn't have to. Mr. Manassian, you're a tailor. Do you think you can fix my tuxedo? Your tuxedo doesn't need fixing. Did what? That's what I came to tell you. Last night, by mistake, I brought you Hector Smith's tuxedo. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So all that mealtime misery was caused by a case of mistaken identity. Well, you can't blame Father too much. After all, tuxedos do look pretty much alike. And come to think of it, the woman of the house has a very similar problem. Consider coffee, for example. There are so many brands. How's a gal to know which one has the most in flavor? Well, just remember this. In this nation of coffee lovers, more people buy and enjoy our Maxwell House coffee than any other brand at any price. Why? Because it's the only coffee with that wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor. This weekend, then, start enjoying our Maxwell House. Savor that satisfying taste of contentment in every fragrant steaming cup. You'll say Maxwell House has the flavor for you and your family. As for value, well, just count all the truly good cups you get from each pound. You'll know Maxwell House is today's coffee buy. So for the most in flavor, the most in value, look for the sign of good coffee, the big white cup and drop on the familiar blue tin of Maxwell House. Take home the one coffee that's always good to the last drop. Another day has rolled away, and the Chamber of Commerce dinner has gone down in history. Not, however, without a late evening report to his family by the Toastmaster General, Mr. James Anderson, Sr. Like this. Yes, sir, it was a very unusual dinner. Very unusual. Did they have fenugreek seeds? They had everything. And Dr. Clark told Hector Smith... Well, how did Hector like his new tuxedo, dear? Uh, he liked it fine. Anyway, Dr. Clark told Hector... Did it cost very much, Father? Let's not go into that now. Dr. Clark said... Did Dr. Clark look like a rabbit? <laughs> Kathy, will you please... You know, come to think of it, he did. <laughs> well, as long as Mrs. Clark is happy. Of course, he made a great deal of sense. He explained how practically every human ailment can be traced directly to improper dietary habits. And the health dinner we had tonight... Uh, excuse me, Dad. Would you like to split the last hamburger with me? Uh, that's a good idea. May I have the mustard, please? Here you are, Father. Thank you. Have a little more pickle, Lily, Dad. All right. Uh, where was I? Dr. Clark's dinner. Oh, well, we started with raw cabbage soaked in olive oil, and then we had some stewed kale seasoned with fenugreek seeds. And you know what's the funny thing about those seeds? You never even know they I'm were there. I'm next on the donuts, Kathy. Dr. Okay. Clark explained that May you I chop them the up real sugar, fine, please? and you add them there just you are, the kale is coming to a boil. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, Dorothy Lovett, Rhoda Williams, Norma Jean Nilsson, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. So until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee, always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Join Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, tonight on NBC.